Hello world, I'm Nick, software engineer and .NET fan, and today in this video I want to talk about some of the JSON changes that have come with .NET 8 Preview 1. So .NET 8 is upon us in its preview form, with the first preview now available, and one of the first things I spotted was some changes to the way JSON was handled in system uh, .text.json. Now I work with JSON all the time, I'm sure it's the same for most of you, and there's some little quirks about the way JSON is deserialized in .NET, which are now changed in .NET 8 Preview. One of the things that we often see is when deserializing uh, JSON into objects, uh, there's a certain default behavior that happens with missing properties. By that I mean missing properties in the object that you're deserializing into. So where you've got properties in your JSON that don't exist in the object that you're deserializing into. By default, these would just be ignored. So say, for example, you had uh, variable 1, 2, and 3, uh, or, or property 1, 2, or 3 in the JSON, and just property 1 in the object, variable or property one would go into that term property in the class, but the other two that were missing, they're just ignored. Now in most cases, that's probably okay. Uh, but in a lot of cases, and I found that this myself recently, sometimes I want to know if there's an inconsistency between the JSON and the object I'm deserializing. So luckily in .NET 8, there's a new attribute that we can use on system.text.json, which can allow you to specify what behavior you want to adopt when this happens. So I've got a console application here in .NET 8 uh, and I'm just using system.text.json and the first thing I want to do is get some JSON. So I put some sample JSON into a document on my temp folder. Uh, so I'm just going to start the application and let that be read in by file.readalltext and we'll take a look at the JSON. So I've got a very simple bit of JSON here, name Nick, age 34. I know you're shocked. Uh, obviously, you would think I was 24. Um, but basically, this is the object we want to deserialize into our foo object. Now, I'm sure you can see there's a discrepancy between what's in the JSON and what's in the object. We've got name and age in the JSON, but just name in the object. So by default, the age that's in the JSON will be lost. It'll just get ignored. So let's see this in action. So the next line is going to be the JSON serializer. So in system.text.json, we do JSON serializer.deserialize of T. So that sends it into the object of our choice, passing in the string, which is the sample JSON. So I'll do that. And then we'll take a look at new foo, which is the object. And you can see it has deserialized, but the only thing in there is just Nick, obviously, because there's no age property on that object. And this could very easily go unnoticed. So in, in a sort of real world scenario, you may have missed adding that property when you were creating the object, or somebody else may have added it into the JSON and you didn't know about it. And that can be a problem because uh, if you're dependent on that object being deserialized and then using all that data further upstream, then you may have these sort of silent errors uh, that are not giving you any warning. How do we actually change this behavior? Well, in .NET 8, we've got a new attribute that we can use to modify the default behavior. What we need to do to add this attribute is we need to add the attribute to the object that we are deserializing. So in this case, we're deserializing foo object, and so we need to put an attribute above that. So I'm just going to put the square brackets above the class definition, and the attribute name is JSON unmapped member handling. So this is a member of system.text.json dot serialization. So we add that in, and that accepts a particular option. So it's a, an enum of JSON unmapped member handling. So we can say JSON unmapped member handling. And then with that, we get two options. We get the option to skip, which is already the uh, default behavior. So it's basically saying for an unmapped member, so something that's not in the object we're deserializing, skip it. So just don't do anything with it. So if we did that, we'd have the same behavior we had before. So if I just put that in and say skip and then run this again, then everything it happens just as it did. Now, if I was to go and um, remove that, so say for example, I went in here and said, take away uh, this property, so it no longer exists. Uh, let's take a look at what happens. So it still works. You can see here, 
we've got foo object and it's just null and that would be the same as if we'd just tried to serialize something that was completely unmapped because we've got this skip it's not doing anything and if i comment this out as well you'll see that the behavior is just the same so if i go to sample json i'll remove that name property so now we've just got the age and you can see it's skipped over it's just null so the json unmapped member handling dot skip is really just the default behavior you know in most cases you probably don't even need to put this it may be that um, there's a further change in dot net 8 remember this is a preview they may change it so that they add more member handling options for now skip seems to do the the default behavior so let's look at the other option, which I think is the more important one in this case, which is dot disallow. So with dot disallow, um, we can say if that member is unmapped, so for example, the age property that's in the JSON, then we want to throw an exception because we want to catch that. We want to say, okay, there's a, there's a discrepancy here and they must match. We want them to, to completely deserialize. Uh, so let's throw an error in that case. So by adding the JSON unmapped member handling dot disallow, we should see an unhandled exception up here. So if I run this, and then you can see we've got our JSON as it was before with the age uh, property, which is not in foo object, and then we try and run it. And you can see here we've got an unhandled exception. So the JSON property foo object could not be mapped to any .NET member contained in type age so that's even shown the specific property which is not mapped so straight away we've got a way of handling this if we use a try catch we put some error handling in then you've got a way to, to notify uh, the end user or the other system that's consuming this uh, to say hey you tried to deserialize something but one of the items that you're bringing in is new it's not in a class it's not in the class that you're deserializing into so that was a simple introduction to the JSON unmapped member handling attributes in .NET 8 Preview. I'm looking forward to see what they could do with this going forward. This may be complete. I don't know if it, it hasn't said in the documentation as far as I've seen if this is a feature that's complete. But I think it's a really good one. And I think it's something that really, uh, in most cases, you'd want to know if, uh, if you've got some discrepancies between JSON and uh, destination classes. Um, so let me know what you think of this feature. Will you be using it? Are you moving to .NET 8 or are you going to wait? Are you going to check out the preview? I want to hear from you. Write in the comments below to let me know. Uh, subscribe to the channel and give us a like. It really does help and I'll see you soon for some more .NET content.